Hey guys, Robert here with Coastal GX. I'm in Kyle, Texas with my wife Cassie at RV Land and we are here to pick up our dream camper trailer over here. That's the Opus Air OP4. I'm going to be uh, getting a nice tour by Josh over here with RV Land. Yes, sir. And uh, Josh, you want to tell us it's a 2023 and tell us a the little bit more about 2023 it. 2023 Opus OP4 is what it is. That'll be the model number and the make manufacturer. Sweet, let's get started, brother. Yes, sir. So guys, first things first, you're gonna have is your 20 pound propane tank right here. Opus does send you with a spare regulator and I'll show you that that's located inside the trailer. You do have these two um, holders right here and therefore you can put uh, jerry cans here. I believe they're the six gallon capacity that they can hold. Um, located up here, what you'll notice is you have a manual emergency brake that actually engages on the braking system to lock them in and you're going to have your arc tongue jack right here the handles over here in the side and right here you're going to have your pintle hitch now this is uh so, or not a pintle hitch a uh, rotating hitch is this a, what they call a do35 or d035 I yes see sir right yes sir yeah and this the, the special thing about this thing is it allows you to articulate so it articulates like this yeah it also articulates like this. Awesome. Yes, sir. So it's like a giant U-joint basically that you're hooking up to the end of your vehicle. Gotcha. Yes, sir. And then this right here is going to be your emergency breakaway cable. So what you'll do is you'll hook this up to a separate point of contact that your vehicle, not with the safety chain, but beside the safety chain is fine. And then if this vehicle ever does become detached from your towing vehicle, then what'll happen is it'll yank this out. There's two metal bands in here that'll make contact and that'll lock up the electric brakes so your vehicle doesn't continue rolling. So located over here, you're gonna have your Dometic. It's a uh, 1.150, um, so it's a 1,150 BTU. It's an AC heat pump combo. And so uh, you have AC or heat. Uh, Opus does not allow you to order these things with the propane furnace and an AC, so you either get the AC and heat pump or you get just a furnace. Okay. Yes, sir. And now, you, in order to power this, uh -huh. the, the solar's not gonna do it like we discussed. No, sir. You're gonna be, have to be plugged into shore power at least to 30 amp supply. Or, or, or a generator. Yeah, or a generator, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then you'll have your gas shocks, of course, that assist in your lifting system. You're gonna have your rack assembly right here. Then, right here, you're gonna have your instant water heater so what you would normally do is you'll start unraveling these hoses So this is going to be your water supply line, and then this is going to be your propane supply line. And you're going to have to make sure you turn your gas valve on so you do get gas flow to it. And then if you wanted to demonstrate it, we would go over the, here to the other side and we would turn the water pump on and uh, we can do that a little bit later. Is that okay, okay with you? That's fine. Okay. Yes, sir. And, uh, but we have it hooked up now. And Opus does also make a part. So if you wanted hot water at the sink, you're mm -hmm. not gonna get it yet because this is the only hot water supply and it comes out of here, the shower head. So they do make an attachment to where you can unscrew the shower head right here and then use a quick connect here. And then it will actually plumb that hot water all the way over across the trailer okay. to the sink on the other side. Otherwise you have to get your hot water from here. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. And then right here, you have your, need some lube. Lubricant. This right here is your Iron Man 4x4 tent. And so this is your outside shower tent. Looks like you have something very similar on your... Yeah, I have, I have the awning, but okay. uh, this is the, the privacy tent that we wanted. We ran out of real estate but okay. yeah. on our rack. But uh, with this one right here, I've seen how it works. Yeah. So it's very simple. Open it up, deploys, yes, sir. and uh, you can just... Yeah, and I yeah. believe it's a four foot by four foot square is yeah. the size of the tent. Right here... If you pop this open, you have an outside shower. The keys are inside. Um, so I'll show you that a little bit later, but uh, you have a hot and cold shower there. This is cold only, of course, unless you plumb it in. So a lot of people actually do like to go ahead and just plumb it in because therefore you have a hot and cold shower here and you have hot and cold on the sink on the other side. Understood. 
This right here is your solar hookup. And so it's good for up to 20 amps. Okay. And then you're gonna have your exterior LED tail lights. And now, let's see, there we go. So this is kind of like the first step, right? I mean, uh, you have to uh, unlatch the hooks there and bring it down. Actually, you, you already, I see that you already have the stabilizers down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'd already okay. set them up for us previously. Um, and then these right here are our support bars. So a good thing, good practice too, especially for your followers if they're looking at getting an Opus or they own an Opus now, mm -hmm. pull these out ahead of time. Yeah. Therefore, you're not having to reach inside and reach up under here when you do have this top open. Kind of let them, let them rest right here. Yes, That's sir. a good idea. Yeah. And then this right here is gonna be kind of the main heart of the Opus. So you turn this on. I'm going to turn the AC on. So right here, this is going to be for your back water tank. This will be for your front water tank. Located right behind here, you're going to have a 12 volt socket. This is the reset for this 12 volt socket. And then you're going to have your water pump, your power plugs, the give uh, 12 volt power to all your 12 volt plugs, your fridge power, your exterior and interior lights on and off. And then Opus also does offer a coffee warmer, so if you want to purchase it, you can set it over here and hook it up, and that will actually supply you with uh, power, and it'll warm your coffee up for wow. you in the morning. Located right here, you have two USB chargers, and then that's the magic button that everybody likes to touch. Oh, that's, that's the one that blows it up and everything. deploys yes, it. All right. And so when we get a second, we will open this thing up for y'all. This right here is a little exterior light that they give you. So over here, you're going to have your propane hookup, your cold water, and your hot water. And that will be for your kitchen. Look at this. Let's see. There we go. And there is kind of a little catch that you're going to have to go ahead and pass uh -huh. right here on the roller system. So when you get it all the way out, yeah. you might have to push it in and then just give it a little jerk just to get it over that hump. Make sure it, 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 it kind of uh, secures itself there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you get down here, there's this little button. You press that, it'll release. Then you drop this down. And then you have wing nuts right here. Loosen them down. Or tighten them down. And then there you go. Okay. Is there uh, another support thing no, for this? Sir. This is so good no, enough. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. there's no support for this. I mean, I wouldn't put, I'd say probably try to limit it to 15 pounds or less, probably. Gotcha. And then, located over here, you're going to have your stove top. And of course, we have our windbreakers here. So if you are cooking and it is windy outside, so we don't blow our flame out. Set it up just like that. Awesome. And then this, uh, a lot of people like to use this for a spice rack. You okay. can put your spices there if you want to. Uh, cooking utensils, oil, basic vegetables, really anything that you need it Or even dry your, your plates or whatever. Huh? Yes, sir. Already comes with it a cutting board. It does come with a cutting board. And then it also comes with this little screen that goes inside of the sink. Okay. And then if you wanted to give power you would hook this up here. We would come back over here. Turn our light switch on. There you go. And that will give us this light right here. Nice. Yes, sir. And then you have cold and hot right here Beautiful. on the faucet. Uh -huh. So when you go to hook this up, oh, and this is going to be your user's manual. Okay. It is it does say 2022 just because nothing, I don't think anything changed between 2022 and 23 on the Opus. And then this right here is your 110 volt plug. So the refrigerator that's in here, I'm yeah. going to show you, it is plugged in already to the trailer. Okay. However, if you wanted to remove it and put it inside your house, put it next to the refrigerator, let it get cold and then load things inside, you could do that. Nice. And then just bring it back out here, plug it back up, and therefore it wouldn't use any of your battery if you're not plugged in to get the fridge cool. You can just use your house outlets. That would be good, yeah. And then, so what you'll do is you'll take your blue hose here and usually it's actually easier to hook up the red hose just because 
it the blue hose will get in the way when you're trying to hook up a quick connect here now the red hose whether it's the red or the blue uh let's say that we don't have that hot water back there yes sir okay um what does it still work or does it have no. to be blue with so blue nothing or? will come out of the, of the hot side it just okay. has no water whatsoever okay. because it's not being plumbed in okay yes sir so I have to use the blue one, the blue yes, side. Sir. Yeah, you have to use the blue side. Mm -hmm. And then you would hook that up there. Then what you can do is you'll grab, this is your propane hose for your stove top. Okay. And we have to turn our gas flow on. All right. And then you'll see right here, this is the drain hose. So for the sink. So you actually have to reach through here and there's a hole on the bottom. And it does have a nice grommet around it, so you don't have to worry about cutting up your hose. Yeah. And you could drain this into a five-gallon bucket, or if you're just wrenching your hands off, or it's you know environmentally friendly, and you could just let it drain onto the ground. And you all want to go ahead and close this thing back up. Yeah. Okay. And do you want y'all want to do it? You want me to let yeah, you let, do let it? Yeah. Let me give it a try. Going? Okay. Let me give it a try. Absolutely. So obviously, we'd be closing the gas first. Yes, sir. Right. Go ahead and remove this propane right here. Now, wondering if I have to re retrieve the, the water hose here. All right, so that's in there. That's that for that. And then let's go ahead and remove these. That. And these will secure. So no dust or sand or anything, mud, anything gets in there. I'm sure that's a big no-no. Save us a lot of headaches. Yes, sir, it will, for sure. Yeah, and uh, of course, gotta put everything back where it belongs. One thing I wanted to touch real quick on. Talk to me. So when you are closing these, you have to make sure that you latch these. Boom. Because if they do not latch, when you slide it back in here, the drawers could possibly open and then you'll have to find out, you'll have to get a long screwdriver or a bar okay. in order to hold this so you can actually retract the kitchen out again. Gotcha. Yes, okay. sir. So let's put these back in here. Like Josh said, got to make sure that they latch. Yes, okay. Sir. Right there. This thing so, was... Yes, just like that. So if, yep. And then you'll push the faucet all the way down. Like there that. you go, and yes, sir, just like that. Just kind of leave it flush, mm -hmm. then bring this down, like so. Yes, sir. This, uh, we just bring it down like this? Yes, or? sir. And then this is the power plug, so when you oh, that's this, important. Yeah. that right there is what will cut off the power to the LED light for you. There you go, and it's important that you remove this because if you slide it back in, you can cut that easily, huh? Yes, sir. All right, now these, wings right here it just uh kind of did this yeah. number so if you look back here they're actually on a slider so oh. you don't have to slide it across anything there you go and then there's also a keeper right here that'll keep these nice right. and flush beautiful bring it down all right now last but not least we have this piece right here okay let's go ahead and take care of this one No, nope. being... so don't do that yet. So oh. don't tighten it up yet nope. and I'll show you why. All right. So what you're gonna wanna do is leave it fairly loose. All so right. when you come put it back up here, you can see there's just a little bit of play. All right. So what you'll do is you'll extend this out, slide it oh, over, there you and go. that's when we'll go ahead and tighten it up. Gotcha. Let's see, oh, going the wrong way. Now, Everything secure, do a double check, make yes, sure sir. the hoses, and then. And so you'll oh. want to hit lift on this handle here. It's this one. Yes, sir. All right. And you'll give it a little tug, just like that, and then it'll smoothly roll all the way back in for you. Uh, another thing I'd like to tell you to watch out for yeah. is always make sure these are back in the open position, because if not, I'll show you what'll happen. You can bend them easily, huh? Is it'll hit right Oof. here. Yeah and then it'll hit right here too. Gotcha. So always make sure these are in the proper position when you're opening and closing. Okay. Latch it back yes, up. Yes, sir. And then 
right here is our refrigerator. So one thing that Opus has actually designed is they've designed this fan right here to kick on. So the byproduct of cold air is hot air. Yeah. And so instead of the refrigerator having to fight its own elements and basically turn itself into a refrigerator and an oven, it will turn this exhaust vent on and then what'll happen is it'll draw the air out of there so it'll create a vacuum which would then bring in fresh air so it does not just consistently get hotter and hotter and hotter in the box. How does that fan turn on or? Yeah, I believe it is thermostatically controlled. Oh, so once okay. it gets so hot, it'll kick on. I do not know the temperature set though. Gotcha. So let's go ahead and turn the refrigerator on. Everything oh, actually, up. I think it turns on when you turn the fridge on, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh, oh yeah, because yes. it was already yep. connected. Yes. Let's see. Yep, it turned it on yeah. for us. And then, so you'll come over here to your power mode. And then you can hit this button one time and you can adjust your temperature. So if you wanted to, you can bring this thing all the way down to negative one degrees. Wow. Okay. And it's a, is it a dual zone or is it just a single one on this one? On this one, I believe it is a single. Yes, sir. And now you do have a drain plug right here. So a lot of okay. people like this, if, you know, if you're going to take it to a beach run, you know, you go down there and set up on Port A or Corpus or wherever you want to set up. Yeah. And you want to run down the beach 10 miles from the trailer. Well, you can just take this with you and throw some ice in there if you need to and then drain it out and put it right back in here and it goes right back to its original use from nice. Opus. Yes, so this is a 63 quart, right? I, I believe it's an ARB 63 yeah. quart. All right. Let's see. It'll probably tell us there should be a model number somewhere. Yep, there's a model number right here. And that says model type. It doesn't say. It's okay. Yep, 60 liters is oh. what it says. Volume is 60 liters. 63 quarts. Nice. Yes, sir. And the way it's uh, set up here, I see there's a connection box for a controller or something in there. Yes, sir. I don't know the camera. Oh, there you go. And it's pretty much just free flowing. There's nothing. Uh, just got to be careful it doesn't get pinched, I guess. Yes, right? sir. Yeah, just be careful it doesn't get pinched. Yeah, there's no uh, retrieving thingy in there. No, sir. Right. So, um, however, you do have this handle right here. And now I will tell you, common issue that we run into with Opus customers is this is magnetic okay. and they forget to pull it off. And so when they're traveling on the highway, they get to where they're going and they no longer have a jack handle. So Oof. always just remember if you have an Opus or you have one of these arc tongue jacks with the magnetic handle on it, make sure you remove it and store it securely and safely. So when you're traveling, you can ha have it when you show up to your spot. See the, a is the AC running right now? Yes, sir. Okay. And you said uh, it's got... Um Somebody had told me, hey, you know, just be careful because of the draining of the AC, the condensation. Mm -hmm. But you say it's got a hose or something? Let's see, where? Right here. So if you look right here, you have a drain tube. All right. Or a drain outlet, basically, is what it is. And also, this does lock in, so you can't just push it in. You yeah. have to press this down. Oh, okay. And it will release it, and that'll allow you to close. All right, to open it up, you got, I see you got latches. Yes, sir. So front side first. So what we'll want to do is I'll go to the other side. I'll release the latch on the other side, and you'll just do these two. Okay. And then we'll bring this around, and I'll show you where to latch it. Let me see how you're doing. That easy. Yes, okay. Sir. Let's start on latching. Y'all excited? <laughs> yeah. Good. How long have y'all been looking for the Opus? Yeah, several months. Okay, so don't do all the back ones yet. So you'll leave the back ones closed because it doesn't come up till after the front one. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So let me put it back. Okay. Because I have tried to open them up both at the same time, and what will yeah. happen is it'll actually get in a bind right here where they connect and seal together. So it'll come up to about right here, and then you're going to have to push down on this one just to get it to release. Understood. Yes, sir. And then... Sure, honey. All you'll do is... Grab. You'll come over here. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing we just did here, but to the back. Let's do the second one now. Is 
can just uh, now. So that's where these bars come into play for us now. So before we drop it all the way down, you'll need to pull this out. All right. Just by force, yeah. Yes, sir. Go. All right, and now you'll bring it down. So this piece will That's go right one. here, and then you'll have a piece that'll go over there. I will tell you, this is very hard to do just by yourself. This All is right. about the hardest thing you have to do on an Opus. So okay. I'll, I'll help you line yours up first. All right. And then we'll do the same thing to mine. Let's see. Perfect. Go. All right. And, and now what we'll do is we're going to walk around. We're going to grab these corners. We're going to pull the fabric out All towards right. us where you're going to fold it over the edge like this. All right. And it is pretty tight. And then you're going to cinch this up. Now, when you cinch this up, don't yank on it. Okay. We only need a little bit of tension here. We're not looking for a bunch of force just to tighten it down real tight. Okay. okay? And then once you get that corner done, you'll do all four point. corners. This is almost as bad as doing the, the mattress, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there. All right. You want you want to take a look at this? Uh, I don't know. I hope I did it. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Is that well, good enough? really, all you're looking for right now is for it to hold on to it. Because okay. Because once we get this thing blown up, it's going to put a little pressure out here, and then you can come over here and pull the rest of this okay. out. Yes, sir. Now. The only thing we have left, we have to close. There's five of these plugs right here. All right. There's going to be two here, two on the other side, one in the middle. And then we go around and we press the black button and that will blow it up for us. Boom. Okay. These right here, honey, you want to? Now, when you're tightening them, they don't have to be super tight. You just get them snug. That's okay. all you want. One. And I guess got to make sure that they get threaded in correctly, too. Yes, huh? sir. Yeah, there you go. All right, okay, let's go on this other side. Well, you said the middle. No, so they're all on this side. Oh, the they're all on that side. Yes, sir. Okay. So you'll have one here, one here. You'll have the two back there, and then you'll have this one right here in the middle. All right. Located right here. Yes, sir. Total of five, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, honey. Actually, you do it. Me? Yeah. All you have to do is press a button. All right. Come on. So you're going to press this little white button in right there, and that's it. Yes, ma'am. And that's it. Now we wait. Another thing that I like to do is, and I've noticed if it's only when it's colder or cooler, if you're like, if this thing's out in the beaten sun, you won't have this issue, but sometimes you have to go inside just to help a few of the tubes up. Oh. But like I said, only sometimes. So this is gonna be your door. All of right. course, you'll have your keys here. Damn These are your Opus keys. Yeah. So the fireplace key, or the one that looks like a fireplace key, Yeah. that's gonna be to operate your door. If you do, forget these keys somewhere, you can just reach inside and you can overpower that latch okay. up there with your finger and move it out of the way. And then we'll pull this out. Or actually, let's extend this leg real quick. Here, I'll hold those. There you go. I think we are all happy that we're doing this under this huge uh, port over here. <laughs> Me too. This cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, it's really nice when it rains outside. <laughs> 
And then what you would do, so you have these snaps, yeah. you'll snap these down right here. All right. And then you also have this snap down here. And All then right. you'll connect the Velcro there, and then that'll just seal your door up for you okay. when you're parked permanently, not when you're stationary for a while. Yeah. And now, yep, and it looks like we need to give it just a little bit of help. So if you want to look inside of here, right, and like here, I honey. said, it's only when I think it's a little cooler okay. that you have this issue, uh, because I know when I'm setting them up in the sun, I don't ever have these issues, and I think it's just the material is a lot more pliable in the heat versus in the cool. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Just push up. Yes, sir. And you just turned on the lights there? Yes, sir. I sure did. All right. So I see. I wonder if I... Honey, you want to give me the... Oh, oh you, were, you were recording it. Good job. Good job. Yeah. All righty. So at this point in here, you're going to teach us, I guess, how to set up the... It looks like it's fully, fully done, huh? Yes, sir. And then if you want to, once you push that back up, you can always, because the pump right here kicks yeah. off because of pressure. Okay. So you can turn it back on. And now, since we did have them few bins, it'll add more pressure to the system and then okay. it'll cut off again. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. And then we'll make sure it's nice and hard and not going to have any issues at all. Oh, I see what you're saying, you know, because once... I guess it, it, it took its shape, mm -hmm. then there's still more space in the cavities for yeah, more. Yeah, because you know, like your plastic, you know, tubing, it's gonna have little wrinkles in it. Well, once you add that pressure, then wrinkles are slowly gonna release. And then once they've released for, you know, a minute mm -hmm. or two, press the button one more time, let's pump it up with a little more pressure so we have a good solid base. Gotcha. Especially if you're in a windy situation, I definitely recommend doing that twice. All right. Now yes, you sir. And so now in order to set it up, what you wanna do is, is that a tripod? Uh, okay. Yeah, I can. So like if you wanted to set it up maybe like right here or something, uh -huh. what we're going to do is you're going to have to remove everything out of the floor and put it on the back bed and then you're going to build it piece by piece. From here and will... onto this back bed? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. It, we don't have to do anything with that valve or anything yet, No, right? um, so they do recommend that you unplug it if you're going to okay. be camping for more than a day, I believe, is All what right. they say. All right. So where do you think uh, this camera should be then? Um, At that corner? Or? Um, I mean, you're really, uh, probably this corner actually. All That's right. probably the best corner you're gonna get right there. Okay guys, so please, you know, we're kind of, there's limited space in here. So, you know, we're gonna start removing these cushions and you said these cushions to put them up on this other bed, right? Yes, sir. All and right. so here, we'll take these and I'll hand them to you. Oh, and, oh. and I'm glad we had that issue because I can show you how to resolve that. I don't even know what that is. That is the thermostat. Oh, and I'll show you some boo-boos that people make when they're putting them back on so we All can right. prevent that. For Those are, uh, these, these are, are things. These are the weather guards. Okay. Yes. For, for, yeah, mosquitoes or Heck yeah man. yeah i did, did your I, homework. I, I did my research <laughs> yes sir look at these guys so this is like to prevent bugs to come in and kind of like seal the cracks all right and right here we'll have these we'll have this here yes, yes ma'am it's actually okay in here Go ahead and remove the table. And I'll just set the table over here for the time being. You're probably wondering, honey, where you're like, hey, how are they stand withstanding being in there? It's so freaking hot. All right. And so then what you'll do is you'll take these cushions. So this one will sit here in this corner. All right. This one will sit here. in this corner all right let me move out of the way yes, here sir. and then I'll, do you want to put the pieces in yeah let okay. me uh yes sir here, let me switch out with you yes sir you got it and i'll step out real quick all right so is it the center piece that goes next yes sir all right. So when you go to put that in, the easiest thing to do is push one of them. So like when you attach it, you'll push real hard to that one side. 
Uh huh. Because that Velcro is really strong. Oh, so shoot. you, you got to square it up usually before you let it touch. Oh, okay. So, yep, well, just like that. Oh, let's see here. Shoot. So it, yep. So now that you see you're dropping this one side down, yeah, you'll push it real hard over here, and then attach it on the other side. Perfect, just like that. And this is going to be your cushion for your right side. All right, and I guess you pretty much you can tell with the with the piping. So, uh, yes, sir. Oh. I see there's this thing right here. Does it move or no? Yeah, yes, sir, it does, but you don't want to move it. Oh. So I'll show you. So when you're doing this with the Velcro, if you do it like this. Uh-huh. Okay. And then you, that's all you have to do. You got to come back and somehow separate a little bit and then push it down and then you're done. All righty. And then we have one more cushion to add. And that's this cushion right here. Yes, sir. Here. I like playing furniture Tetris. Yes, sir. All right. Here, you'll pull these extensions off and you can adjust the height of your table. So I always just go as tall as it can go. So you can know it goes that high or shorter. All right. beans and so what these are for is these are the king bed attachments oh okay so they go up here and they would sit like this so this one would sit so we do have those king bed attachments on this one yes sir so they go right here now i will tell you the one side about the king bed attachment uh -huh. is it does hinder how well the air conditioner flows oh because the return vent will be covered Gotcha. If you do the king side, the king bed, uh, uh, the king bed extensions, um, and it's over here where the AC return vent is. All righty. So let's see. Let's go ahead and do this here. Let's push this out. There we go. There you go. And then I'll let you see just, and, and it would mirror to the other side so you could see what it would look like. I gotcha. Yes, sir. All right, well that's gonna help anyway. Yes, sir. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And that's like a privacy screen, is that what that is? Yes, sir, yeah. You could take it and clip it up. So I'll leave one side down, one side up, just so you can see what it looks like if it's okay. up or down. Because you can actually completely pull that thing out if you wanted to. All right. So I guess, you know, the layout, out, these, these seem a little small, guys. Thank goodness. First time I'm ever going to say that I'm blessed to be short. But <laughs> it seems like uh, these would be... I mean, I guess if you're kind of a short person, you can go this way as well. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. And yeah, guys, now we're not going to get into it, but as you can see, there's LED lights. There's, uh, you know, these other zippers over here where you can let a lot of air in. Um, there is like a rain fly on top of everything. Yes, sir. And uh, there's plenty of ventilation. If you decide to go with the natural air, there's plenty of windows here. So the fly was also actually invented, and that's why you're going to have the screens in the roof. So if you were to leave the fly on, since this trailer sits pretty high off the ground, if you had any type of wind, it would create a vacuum up top and suck the heat out of the trailer. Nice. And so that's what it's designed to do is have good airflow under the fly and will allow it to cool the trailer off naturally just with the breeze. Good, good, yes, de good design. Now, so located here, you're going to have your 12 uh, USB sockets. And then you're going to have your power socket here. So if you wanted to hook up a light on this side, when you fold this up, you get your toilet here. Yeah. 
And in order to open the door, if you wanted to, to use the toilet inside, same type of latch that's under the uh, um, I notice. kitchen. Yeah. And then just press it back to latch it again. Located under here, you have two AGM batteries. So where you see the white cotton right there, that's because there's vents outside that vent there, but that's to keep any type of bugs, dirt, debris, or anything out of the trailer. Okay. Let me ask you this. So on these uh, AGMs, I know that you have to uh, pretty much make sure that they're maintained. Uh, is that with a trickle charger? Is that with a, how do so you do that? Really, the, the it already has a charge controller and Opus also sends you a 30 amp to 110 adapter. So you can plug this thing in if you store it in your garage so it can keep the batteries maintained for you. Okay. And then they're charged up and ready for every trip that you take. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. So I can just leave it. Leave yeah, it and I'll show you the, the adapter they send okay. you for sure. So I'm glad I came over here. This is, could be a learning point for people that own Opuses right now yeah. and had this issue. So. With, on the Dometic thermostats, if this falls off, and if you touch all three buttons here at the same time, which will happen when you put this back on, it will send this thermostat into test mode. So, unfortunately, when something like this happens, it can be a pain in the rear, but I'm trying to save you from having issues down the road. Mm -hmm. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go outside, you're gonna unplug the trailer from power. The okay. second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna kill the power right here at the control board. Okay. We want this trailer completely dead when we reinstall this, so there's no power to the board to send it into the test mode that it's gonna try to go into if it does have power. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna do that for you. So pretty much turn off the red key? Yes, sir. You'll just turn this red key off right here? Yeah. And then, let's see, the thermostat should actually might be dead without us having that. Yep, and the thermostat's dead. So now what you wanna do, click it back on. And then if you wanna hit that switch out there for me. The red one, right? Yes, sir. The, the, the red, red knob, one, just if you turn just push it to the it right. And turn it to the right. There you go. Perfect, thank you. And now the AC is back on. Yeah. So on the thermostat right here, so this is gonna be your mode button. So the first mode you're gonna start in is gonna be the off position. So you press it one time and it's touch sensitive like a cell phone screen. It's gonna to go to fan mode. So you're gonna have low, high, or auto fan. I always recommend you leave it in auto. So therefore it will automatically kick on and off for okay. you. Then you press it again. It's gonna, you're gonna see the snowflake at the bottom. That's the AC. And you can adjust your temperature. We can set it to, let's say 68. Is that good for y'all? Yeah. If you press both up and down at the same time on the thermostat, it will switch to Celsius. Press them both again, it'll switch back to Fahrenheit for you. If you press this button one more time, it's gonna go to the furnace. Well, you don't have a furnace on here. So you're gonna have to press it a time, one more time after that. That will go to where it will say heat pump. When it says heat pump, that's the heat source for the trailer. Mm -hmm. And then that's where you can set your thermostat. And then instead of AC blowing, it'll start blowing heat. Gotcha. This right here is a carbon monoxide and propane detector from Atwood. And then this right here, located over here, it's your battery maintainer and battery charger. You're going to have your plumbing system over here or some plumbing lines. Uh -huh. This little bag right here is actually the bag for your table so we can put that table in that bag just to make sure it doesn't get damaged during transport gotcha we have our pump right here and then this right here is to help you select between which tank so you can select this tank or you can select the other tank i believe forward is the front tank and then away from the trailer is the back tank okay and i could be wrong so it's vice versa so this is this is the the switch right here yes sir okay uh i guess it's always okay you you killed one switch on to the next one yeah so i me personally i don't really like to kill one mm. personally mm. i i like to uh, I, I believe on this valve if you flip it up i think it can pull off both tanks at the same oh, time okay so therefore it distributes the weight always for you gotcha which is what a lot of people like to do okay and then we have storage under here so not much you know maybe you know like a few anything rubber sided so it does not make any type of contact and nothing yeah. heavy to roll around. Located under here is the outside kitchen. Okay. So this is where you would just see it from the inside. Now, if that kitchen is open, yeah. you do have a decent sized cavity to store stuff in. 
And it makes it a lot easier to lift these up if you remove this back cushion so it didn't get pinched by the bottom cushion. Okay. And then you can fold it all the way up here. Because this, this is where the goodies get good. So this is all the stuff that Opa sends you with. So Opa sends you with a spare light. So if you wanted to install a light somewhere in here and you're trying to read a book, you can just hook it up to one of these power outlets in the four corners. Similar to the one in the kitchen, right? Yes, sir. Opus sends you with a manual air pump. So if your air pump quits working, you can never, you're never stranded. You can use your trailer whenever. Okay. They send you with a tire cover. They send you with wheel chocks. There you go. They send you with a spare LED light strip. So if one of these in here quit working, you have another one to install. They send you with a cut to size shank. You can put this in the end of your drill and run these stabilizer jacks up and down with it. And they give you this link so you can cut it to size or you can use it with this link if you want to. That's awesome. All I have to do is just bring my impact or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, like a quarter inch drive impact would work nice. perfect for you. A fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> for the 50 plus crowd. They send you a patch and repair kit for your tubes here. So okay. if you do have a leak or something like that, hopefully you can fix it on the fly so you don't have to cancel your camping trip. All right. They send you with a 30 to 1 tin adapter. So if you wanted to plug this thing in at your house, That's what you, you have the ability about. to do so. Okay. Yes, sir. And then they send you, and this is all wrapped in plastic, so I don't really want to pull it out. But you have a four-way in here, and then you also have your table leg extension or the, uh, sorry. Support. Yeah. That's support. for the, that little um, thing that comes out or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, that's for the thing that comes out on the end. At the kitchen, at the, uh, yeah. The, yes, sir. Yeah. Please. Spare regulator. Always good. And a 25 foot drinkable water hose. Okay. So the best thing, like what I like to do is I got me an 18 inch carpenter's level. I think that's perfect for just about anything you're gonna do on a trailer mm -hmm. and just set it wherever you want to on the trailer on a flat surface mm -hmm. and just go to the tongue jack, crank it up or down till it's level, put your stab jacks down and then pop it up and hop in and camp. You think I could put it like right there where the tongue is, uh, maybe like one with a little magnet? Yeah. Just probably put it there and just kind of like, oh, there it is. So I use the, uh, so you know where the refrigerator is? Yeah. So I use that little, piece right on top of the refrigerator. Oh, okay. Yeah, that runs all the way across the trailer. Mm -hmm. That's where I set mine at. Gotcha. Right there to level my trailer. Okay. For, I see that there's a Bluetooth radio there and uh, you got a fire extinguisher. Yes, sir. The air pump is in there. Yes, sir. The air, well, no, not technically. The air no. pump is located below this. Oh. So the air pump is actually located down in here. Oh, okay. And, and not really, it's more like right here. All really right. Really the best way to explain it. Now, the a uh, the radio, uh -huh. I believe, also is a DVD player. Oh. So I, I do believe that, yes, it is a DVD player. So if you wanted to, you could actually, if you had like a little 12-volt television or like a little TV, you could, you know, that was wireless or whatever, you could plug it in and watch DVDs on this thing if you still have DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your sure. shore power cord to keep. You have your... Right here, you have another 12 volt socket, so if you need to bring anything in from the car and charge it in the trailer, you can. Uh, smoke alarm's located right here. This right here is your interior light, so you can actually dim them. Mm. And then nice. this is for that, if you see that little LED light right outside that's turning on and off, so that's for a little exterior light. And then you have your fire extinguisher right there. Very cool. And uh, let's see, uh, speakers of course, inside yeah. speakers. Uh, located right here you're gonna have your little breaker box so just like breakers in your house if they yeah. flip push it back and reset it all right if it keeps flipping you probably got a weak breaker or you're or you're pulling too much on it so you know it's a more serious problem yeah. uh, um, as, as far as uh, space um, where we can keep bedding or anything like that there's um, you're kind right of there under you that's just probably work. that's that's it. Be the most versatile storage area that you're gonna have gotcha here. okay yes sir all right. And just remember, so what a lot of Opus customers do yeah. is they go to Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart or wherever they want to, and they grab the um, uh, the plastic totes, and then they just put them on the rack assembly. Mm -hmm. When you're traveling, just use a ratchet strap to hold it down. So when you get there, you pull it out, and then you get your camper blown up, and you throw it in here, and you're done. Nice. Yes, sir. 
All right. And guys, Josh, just remind everyone that these pieces right here are very resistant. I mean, even puncture resistant. Mm -hmm. But in, like you said, it comes with a repair kit mm -hmm. and it has like layers. So if this gets punctured, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that the whole thing is going to collapse. So there is, so you have this outside layer, then you have an inside layer, and then you have your tube. So you have two layers before you get to the plastic tube. Okay. Here. Yeah, so uh, what are we doing here? We're gonna... Right here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let the air out of the Opus. This will be a loud pop, and make you jump a little bit. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta check my pants. <laughs> and then I push in just a little bit, and then just work your way Just over to kind of kind of keep it inside. Yeah, just to kind of get it to fold over. So that's actually another trick I was taught, uh, showed by a customer. Is, uh -huh. uh, the best way to fold this thing in is what he taught me, and it actually has worked very beneficial. Kind of keep them in. So the way I do it might be a little controversial on the way I close this up mm. compared to other people and other ways that other people may close it up. But I will tell you why I close it up the way I do when we do it. Mm. All right. So now what I do is we're just going to go. Now all the corners need to be uncinched and we need to lift them back up and roll them over. Pretty much the reversal. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Honey, can you hold this? Mm -hmm. Let's see what I do this. So pretty much open it and then try to do this back over this way. All right, let me go to the other side. Trying to make sure everything's inside of the. There you yeah. go. And if we had that sun awning, uh -huh. then it would just remain attached to the zipper and, and yeah. stuffed in there? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, and so if you're uh. going to have the awning or you're going to have, or the sun canopy or you're going to have the annex, what I would recommend is when you go ahead and you deflate your Opus. I would give yourself at least five minutes of just letting gravity take effect, push some of the air out before you start folding it up so you don't run into any issues with it still having air in the system. If you are short or vertically challenged, mm -hmm. one thing that will help you wonderfully is take you a broomstick and then uh, put you something fat and knobby on the end of it that's very blunt and not sharp. And you can use it actually just to push this fabric back in there. Like my reacher. <laughs> and then we're just going to do the same thing on this side to it. See what he's doing with the uh, kind of like folding it in yeah. and then the top. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see it's hot, so look at all this room we have right here in the middle of it before yeah. we close it up. So you could put, you know, some bedding or like you said, maybe like a topper, a foam topper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've opened them up to work on them with foam toppers inside of them. Yeah. So I know that that'll work for sure. So you can always, if you ever forget, just remember, just look at this and you can tell which one goes down first. So this is the first one to go, or the last one to go up, so it's the first one to go down. So if you're ready, we can just double check, make sure everything's pushed over, and then we will go ahead and fold the back side in. So this one goes first, yes. the back. And so we'll have to Honey, can you hold it? pull our pins out. And then one thing I like to do is I just go ahead and put my pin back in. Oops. Oh, sorry. I 
forgot. Uh, <laughs> I forgot. I already screwed up. I will tell you, if you wouldn't have done that, you would be my very first customer to not do that. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, if you want to put your pin back in right there. So one thing that I like to do, uh -huh. so we're going to use leverage as our friend right now, okay? All right. So on your side, you're going to have two latches, right? And then this side, we only have one latch. So what I like to do is I come over here, because it doesn't take even an extra two minutes when you're, when you're doing this extra steps. So you get more space, yep. right? So I thread this out, and then I would do it. So I'd be exactly where you are, and you pull down on it, and then you just latch this. And it is hard. There you go. And then just let it go. Okay. And then what we'll do is now, while this is now slowly compressing and the air is being pushed out, we can go do exactly what we did to the back, to the front end. Okay. And then we'll do exactly as we just did there. We'll take the very back one on this side or on the other side, thread it almost all the way out, and then latch it, and then we'll come compress this one down. On, on the other side or this side? Uh, either one, it doesn't matter. You can do this side or that side. Okay. I'll this one, where does that latch at over there? Is oh, that... right here. Okay, so they're squared up. Okay, yeah. so either side wouldn't matter. Okay. Okay. And so now you'll come over here. You'll release this latch down here. And now we'll push it up and over. Uh, try it over here, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you want to push it down for you? Yeah. See here. Let me, let me get over here. Oh, did the other one come on latch? Yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, let me yeah. Do yeah now it's a lot easier. Make sure it doesn't pinch, right? The yes, sir. Fabric. There you go. And you can see how that one was pretty hard because yeah. we've already had this one compressed so it's pushed all the air into this one. So now, what I like to do is, you can go ahead. Second one. Yes, sir. And then just latch that. And it'll be hard. Yeah. Try to be delicate. Yes, sir. And then, back to just the come way. back and just start testing this one until it gets tight. Kind of like the same thread of this one, right? There you go. Yes, sir. And then what you're going to want to feel for, and I'll set these up the way that I was told to and taught to. And so if you pull that off now, let's see. So that one's actually a little tight. So we should loosen it up just right there. So you can ju so just close that, and you should feel how fluid that is. So that's what the feel that you're going for. Okay. When you go to close this thing. Oh, there you go. Okay. So now, yeah, that one's a little tight. So we'll loosen that one up. There you go. Pinch it. And then, same thing right here. I'll let you do the honors. Just like that. Should have oh, yeah. Straight. So, okay. Let me open that up. Yes, sir. There you go. Just like that. So now that we have this one, what I like to do, and so now I stick my arm down this channel a little bit. Right. I grab my fabric and I pull it back, you as go. you can see. And then I do the same thing on the other side, and then this side would be ready to collapse. Okay. Just make sure you have all your material folded in and shoved in so you don't rip any of it. Ready? There we go. And now, if you just do like I just did earlier, take your right arm, probably be the easiest, and then you just grab, pinch that material, and you just drag it back as hard as you can. And the tension should pull it all out from under there. Okay, so now, before you do that, you just latch this. All right. Over here. That one first. There we go. And then I will go latch to the other side, and we'll just work it just like that. Right. Can I do this yes, latch? Yes, sir. Absolutely. I kind of felt that vacuum seal. Yep. Oh, now this one needs to be tightened up. Yes, sir. So you want it? Just a little more. There we go. No, a little more than that. You just want a nice fluid click. Do you, do you think it would be a good idea to 
get some extra linchpins here? You could if you wanted to. Yeah. You could. Uh, a lot of customers, what they do is they actually just throw a lock in it. Oh. Because the thing is, if you lock this one yeah. and you lock the other one, you they can't open up it. They can't open it up at all. Okay. Because you have to lift the front first in order to get the back up, and so they're, you know. Okay. They will fail. That sounds good. There's a switch down the bottom to turn it on. Yes, sir. And then let's see. And this will get pretty hot. That's good water pressure. It's better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you want to feel it, it's uh, getting pretty toasty. Oh my goodness, it's hot. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it'll you can steam, take a steam shower. <laughs> yeah. Come out in the middle of nowhere with this thing, and then you just come over here, flip this off. If you ever need to replace your batteries, they're in here. I think they're D or C series batteries. Oh okay. And then this is your temperature adjustment, and uh -huh. this is your water flow adjustment. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. You got it. Increase so the pressure. I just always go to minimum and minimum when I get through using it, just in case if I do have a leak, somebody turns it on, whatever the case is, it is going, everything is at the minimum rate. Gotcha. You know what I mean? yeah. And now we'll hang this back up and then just go turn our pump off and disconnect the system. So just turn your pump off, turn this off, and you're ready nice. to go. Yeah, you should drain it every time before you get done, especially. Now, one cool thing I will tell you that I like about this system is if you if it's going to freeze, you need to make sure there's no water in the system, yeah. of course. But cool thing is, is you can come back here and just take this whole piece off and just go throw it in the house somewhere. Oh, that's right. It's got a little... Oh, yeah. cool. And that's it. Yeah, or it yeah, does... so we just need to turn the propane off, and then we need to go to the back and uh, fold that tire up and put our... Uh, Bars away. Uh, the support beams. Yes, sir. Top to the top, bottom to the bottom. Then make sure that your latches are open. Go fold this tire up. And then just pull it in. That's it. Up and down or, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, man. Good job, bro. Thank you, sir. I Good appreciate job. it. It's kind of a two person job. All right. Not always, but it yeah. definitely makes it easier. Yeah. So one person will be over here, and they'll unclip these and pull these pins for you. While the other person holds this, or what? No, no, no. While the other person's on the other side, because they'll they'll want to catch it. Oh. Shoot. Okay. So, if now like like I said, this side's really easy. You just pull these pins out, and oh, then I should remove this pin right here or not? Uh, no, no, no. That's perfectly fine. And then when I collapse this, yeah. one thing that I always try to make sure I see is that when you collapse it, it compresses on this little foot right here. And so it didn't really compress. So if it was me, I would give it just a few more turns. There we go, because now it's solid. To compress on the grommet, right? Yes, that Down here at the bottom, you can see that uh, there's some diamond plating. And then you also see your drain valves down there too. The drain valves as well. Oh, is that the, the red? No. Yes, sir. Yeah. I will tell you, though, if you use a socket, it's a little big. Oh. So what, what about that adapter? That, that adapter is perfect for it's it. It's perfect for perfect. it. Perfect. I noticed that it's reversed over here, huh? It's like clockwise to retrieve? Yes, sir. I Come on, that's... Australia. Uh, it's probably because they're under the equator. So everything <laughs> spins backwards, remember? Yeah, the toilet, bro. <laughs> yeah, another thing. Um, especially if you're going to do some off-roading, put these yeah. forward, not backwards, so you don't have to worry about catching that if you're going up a steep incline. For the, like yeah. That. So this hitch, yeah. press it to lock it, that's unlocked, that's locked. I hear that this cap, as a security measure, uh -huh. that it won't, that it won't uh, go in there if, if it's not secured. It won't allow yes, it. Yes, that's true, because look, 
Yeah. There you go. Yes, sir. So that's a good tip right there. Did you hear that on YouTube? I got that on YouTube. Nice. That is a good <laughs> trick. You know, uh, yeah. like, I'm telling you, that's how I know you did your homework. Because yeah. you've come to me with more answers and questions and information about this trailer than most customers. It's uh, thanks to the, the YouTube community, man. Nice. It's worldwide. Yes, sir. But I'm going to twist them a little bit just so we can shorten them. Yeah. That's going to be some controversy on YouTube, but that's okay. You yeah. tell them I'm a certified technician. <laughs> Take it up with Josh, man. Yeah, yeah, take it up with me. And one side done and one to go. So in the state of Texas, you have to cross your chains. Yeah. This is actually your pin right here. Yeah. This pin is actually for here, so when you open it up, you can latch it and make sure that never comes undone. Okay. So that's what that's for. All and right. if you, uh, wherever you want to put it, really. Okay. All right, let me go on the other side, and I think we just got to get you hooked up. We have our Kurt Echo brake controller, wireless. I love these things, personally. And honestly, the best benefit of them really is, is you don't have to dig around in the customer's vehicle anymore like you used to. As a technician, you know, you have to get down and install them, screw into somebody's dash. And at the end of the day, it's not that I had a problem doing that. Customers have a problem with you screwing into their brand new vehicle. Yeah. Sometimes. All right. Moment of truth. Yeah. It's running. We're about to find out. Hey, guess what? what? We got a working charge line. What's that? You have a working charge line. Oh, it does. The, yes, sir. Site? Yes, sir. Okay. Everything is working as it should be. Thank God. All right. If you want to. Uh, just turn your running lights on and your Lexus real quick. All right. Okay, your running lights work. Yeah, I uh, see it. Blinker. All right, right blinker. All right, hand brakes. Okay, cool beans, everything works. Yeah. Now let me show you how to adjust everything on the app. All right, here you go. Let me also hook this up right here for us real quick. So that's our new breakaway cable that we bought earlier. Okay. It's called a zip it. For those of you watching on YouTube, it's the most convenient breakaway cable made. All right, so we'll just hit continue. Scan for devices. These mats are all over me. I should have took a shower yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this is going just in case if you ever lose lose this pin. This is the pin to pair up to it. Okay. If you ever lose it, also on the back side of that seven uh that uh wireless brake controller if you flip it up mm -hmm. on the tab that pin's also written inside of there so okay. you don't lose it what you're looking at here is the orange button is if you ever experience trailer sway in any sort of form or fashion that locks up your trailer brakes for you oh okay max output so this is the amount of braking force we are adding to the trailer mm -hmm. so when you hit the when you set up your brakes on your trailer and you you set up trailer brakes what you want is you want the truck and trailer stopping together so if you hit the brakes and you feel like the trailer is pushing the lexus to a stop and you're having to ride the brakes then what you're going to want to do is turn that number up so we can add braking force to the trailer okay. if we hit the brakes and we feel like the trailer is pulling us to a stop then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lower that because we have too much braking force on on the trailer. Okay. If you feel like you can't get an even number and you feel like either one's the trailer stopping first or the vehicle stopping first, always pick the vehicle stopping first, okay? Because that is the safest point of towing. A lot of people are going to tell you no because if you have to slam on the brakes, the trailer will stop before you. Not true because if you slam on the brakes, there's no ABS on the trailer, so the wheels are going to lock up. It could start sliding, and then on top of that, while your vehicle maintains control and traction, the trailer's gonna come around and do this to you. Damn. So you always want the vehicle to stop a little quicker than the trailer. Okay. Okay. Especially if you're towing lighter than you or same weight as you. Sensitivity adjustment. If you're one of them guys that just is all gas and then just hits the slams on the brakes when you need to, move out of the way and let me go again, you're gonna want that sensitivity up pretty high. If you're more of a guy that just kind of let off the gas and cruise and start slowing down when you're pulling into town or you see somebody pulling out ahead of you, you know, just kick the cruise off and just, you know, start slowing down gradually, then you're going to want your sensitivity on the lower side. Okay. Four is probably a good place to start. Okay. Okay. Now on the max output, I think that you should probably start this around 30. 
okay. on your power. So you'll have, I believe, everything between five and a hundred or ninety or five and ninety-five. Vehicle hazard lights. So what this is for is if, say, something goes wrong with the seven-way on the vehicle and you're towing because you won't have lights anymore in your trailer, you turn hazard lights on and you just plug it into the trailer side and throw it over here. Then it will backfeed with the trailer's batteries and it'll make the hazard lights flash on the trailer so you can make it to safety. Oh, yes, sir. Hey guys, so we're all hooked up and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to say thanks to Josh. Josh, thank you so much. Yes, sir. You are a pro. You know your stuff, man. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, here's my wifey over there. Uh, honey, you're uh, excited for this? Well, so am I. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. And we're going to do a lot more videos, many more videos coming on the OP, okay? Talk to you later.